You got to die to your motherly self, to your mommy addiction, to the matrix and material comforts of this world so that you can atone with the Father. You've heard me talk about this. The only way there's an atonement with the Father, which means having a purpose in life, having meaning in life, patterning your life after truth and righteousness and dignity and loyalty, the only way that that's possible, the only way for us to be true, real men, strong men, is we got to break something. we got to break that umbilical cord to the mommy. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I'm currently in a phase of my life where I have a lot of free time, pretty much the whole day. <laughs> I have a very small amount of obligations and all the physical needs are met. I'm 19 years old and I really don't know how to use all this time and it's even a bit overwhelming. I have hobbies like making music and learning languages, but recently I've been less disciplined with them due to lack of motivation. The last three weeks especially, I've been constantly distracting myself with social media and TV and have fallen back into bad habits, which I thought I had overcome, like porn and alcohol. I feel like I've been blessed with all this free time, but I fail to use it effectively. When I try to make music, I end up procrastinating heavily and end up not finishing any of my projects. I start a new pro I keep starting new projects with heaps of motivation and inspiration, but then stop suddenly. As a result, I have so many unfinished projects. Do you have any advice on how I can push through making projects when it gets boring and how I can stop numbing myself with distractions? This is interesting. It's funny because uh, I saw, it must have been like a clip from Jordan Peterson a couple weeks ago where he was talking about the bane of our society is the fact that we have nothing to work for. We have everything too easy, he was basically saying. And I totally understand what he's saying because when you have everything easy, there's no impetus to do anything. Why should I do anything when everything's handed to me? Everything is easy. And when everything is easy is when we become our most decadent, our most degenerate, our most confused, our most depressed. The whole video was about depression and anxiety. And he's like, that's why we're depressed and anxious is because life is just too easy. And I've sensed this in my life in, in various times and seasons as well, that when things are just a little too easy, I even start becoming self-destructive. And you say you're doing, you're pointing out that you're, you know, you're going back to the bad habits. I find myself doing the same thing, you know, a little bit less now as I've grown older, but I even think back to when I started uh, gaining some momentum on YouTube and my business was picking up back in like 2013, where for like 10 years, I was breaking my face from 5 a.m. in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. I mean, it was just go, go, go. I didn't have a minute to breathe. I had, there was no recreation time for me whatsoever. So I only knew myself as somebody who was just working, 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 either working out or working, right? And, and I, was, I had the energy to do that. I was a young man like you are. And when you're a young man and you have that kind of energy, and you have a reason to expend it. You have a place to put it. You could work like a maniac. You'd be surprised at the amount of power that you have when you're a young man. Unfortunately, our world causes us to waste it with video games, entertainment, porn, weed and alcohol. All the things that cause us to forget that we got this vital power, this energy within us that wants to go. And you know what men do? We destroy, we build, build and destroy. I mean, that's really what it is. Destroy and build, build and destroy, right? And just think about that. I'm living on this farm right now and, the, and to get anything done, you, I have to destroy and then build, right? If you want to build something, what do you do? You first got to dig up the ground, right? So we got to be active. We got to be actively just breaking something, breaking ourselves, breaking our body down in the gym, that's why lifting is, is so intricate. Lifting is such an integral part of my life. And even back then when I was working my face off every day, trying to put food on the table, what was I doing? I was lifting stones, pressing logs. Why? Because I had to break something, right? Breaking my biceps, breaking my Achilles tendon, right? Always breaking something. <laughs> why? Because breakdown means build up. Get out there and break some shit. So what I'm going to ask you to do right now is just consider where you can break your comfort. You gotta break shit to make shit. Remember I made a video about 10 years ago, I made a video a 
quite a few years ago where a young man was like, man, I can't, I can't stop playing these video games and I want to do something great with my life. And I said, you know what you do? You pick up that video game console and smash that shit on the floor. When you smash that shit on the floor, you broke something that's going to do what? It's going to open the gate for you to build something. Now that that's broken, now that you've broken that addiction or you've broken the mechanism by which that addiction comes through, right? You got to destroy something. You got to give something up. In fact, this is the story of the cross. This is the meaning of Christ on the cross is that something has to die for something to be built up. But when our life is lived in pure comfort and sustaining, uh, it's, it's all about sustenance. It's all about sustaining life. Even this whole COVID thing exposed how weak our society is in terms of our mindset. Save grandma. You got to save every single person with, with COVID. We need the government to save us all. No, we don't. We need to die sometimes. Shit needs to die. People need to die. There's nothing wrong with that. Even this whole veganism movement is run by a bunch of fools who don't realize that it's a cycle of life. Animals die so people can live. Shit breaks down so that we can build up. You got to get into the cycle of life, bro. You got to get into the cycle of life and it begins with a breakdown. Something's got to break. Something's got to give. Something's got to die. This is the process of initiation. You got to die to your motherly self, to your mommy addiction, to the matrix and material comforts of this world. So that you can atone with the Father. You've heard me talk about this. The only way there's an atonement with the Father, which means having a purpose in life, having meaning in life, patterning your life after truth and righteousness and dignity and loyalty, the only way that that's possible, the only way for us to be true, real men, strong men, is we got to break something. We got to break that umbilical cord to the mommy. We got to break that addiction to the material world. We got to break ourselves down through fasting, through austerity, through challenge. And if we don't do it, it's, well, it's hard to do for ourselves. And that's why we had elders that did it for us. There was a time when a man like you would have been ripped out of his mom, the comfort of his mom's home, brought out into the darkness of the night and caused to fast be challenged sitting in the sun, getting eaten up by ants, right? Tattooed with like a freaking needle in a rock all over your skin. Forced to go hunt some bear or something. You wouldn't be bored. You wouldn't be bored if you had that breakdown and build up experience in your life through the initiation that's required for boys to become men. You wouldn't have the problem that you have right now. So what do you do? We find ourselves in this postmodern world where comfort. There's a really good book, Live Not By Lies. Live Not By Lies. I've mentioned it a number of times. But in this book, he talks about how he talks about how the communist takeover in eastern Russia or, or in the eastern Europe in the 19, you know, 1920s, you know, 19, 1913, 1918. Right. Bolshevik Revolution. He said that, that revolution, that that Marxist communist revolution that happened in Eastern Europe happened through because it was you know over 100 years ago. It happened through force. It happened through violence. Right. The communists, the Marxists, they had to extol violence against the people in order to get them to comply. So you hear about the gulags and shit like that. Right. The author of this book goes on to say that we're treading the same road, we're treading the same path, moving down the same trajectory as back in the 1918s when the, you know, the, the, the Marxist revolution in Russia. He says the difference now, though, is this, that, it won't, that the revolution is not going to, be ha it's not going to happen through violence. They're not, it's going to happen by gunpoint and gulags. It's going to happen through comfort and addiction. He says, we will give all our rights away, give all our sovereignty away, give our freedom and our dignity away in the name of convenience. And that will be fully run and fully, uh, fully rolled out and executed by, the, um, by big tech. Oh, you would like Amazon to deliver to your house? Well, then make sure you take this shot. Make sure you say an oath to this rainbow. Make sure that you think the right way and don't get engaged with those who don't. Oh, you would like to buy food at Costco. 
well, make sure that you follow these rules, right? You know, and for us today, we don't have a ball and chain per se, but this is the ball and chain. This is the ball and chain. This is the ball and chain. You can't go nowhere without this. And they want everything to be on this. I was listening to, a, uh, to the Ice Age Farmer uh, YouTube channel, and he was talking about how everything is moving towards a, like the global technocratic takeover, he called it, right down to where they want to measure every, everything you eat, everything you drink, everything you think through technology, these, right? And it just begins with these because we put them in our pockets. But next, like that vaccine, there are those who, if you look up Dr. Carrie Medej on Brighton and she starts talking about the technology that's within those vaccines, there's nanotechnology within, that, within those vaccines that essentially make us part computer, right? They want to treat us like, it's like software and they want to treat us like computers. It's like, think about it. You got to get your, you got to get your uh, update. You got to get your, your, your jab update, right? Just think about, think about uh, um, Bill Gates and the computers. You got to get updates. You got to get constant updates on the computer. Otherwise, what? You're going to get a virus. They're treating us the same way. And the whole thing is that we comply. Why? Fear fear of discomfort, fear of dying, fear of not getting along, going along and getting what we want from everybody, being included, inclusive. Inclusiveness is so important these days. Don't you want to be included? Somebody put up a meme on, on Instagram the other day, I saw it, and it showed you know uh, a crowd of people at a stadium, right? And then on the other side of the stadium, it was a bunch of people that were social distanced, so it was like spotty. And the guy was bragging. He was like, life is so good when you're vaccinated. But basically what he's saying is, oh, unless you do what you're told, you don't get the comfort of being a normal person. Right. So where am I going with all this? Of course, I'm ranting again. I'm just in that mood today. You got to break comfort. You got to break your comfort. You can, you're not going to be able to do anything. You're not going to be able to create anything. You're not going to, not only will you not be motivated, you just, you literally will not have the impetus. There will be no reason for you. Part of the reason why you're not motivated is there's no reason to be motivated. Why be motivated? There's nothing to be motivated for. The only way you're going to be motivated, the only way you're actually going to get something done is if you get uncomfortable. That part has to come first, bro. You got to get uncomfortable first. You got to do something that makes your life miserable right now. What does that mean? It could be everything from turn off your cell phone completely. I mean, like throw it into the pool. Get rid of it completely. You're being addicted to porn and whatnot. Get rid of any and everything that can bring porn into your house. If that means break your modem, break your modem. So every time you use the Internet, you got to go to Starbucks. Right. It's a slight inconvenience. Right. Most people hear me say that, Elliot, how can I, I possibly live without the Internet? Well, I am right now, practically. Right? I got really bad Internet right now at my house. So what you do, you go to Starbucks. Yeah. Get rid, get rid of your smartphone. Buy a dumb phone. I'm telling you, there's a trend that's going to come and people are going to be using dumb phones again because they realize how uh, how sick and they've become. With addiction to this phone. Get rid of your phone. Legitimately get rid of your phone. Think about how your life would change if you just got rid of that little discomfort. You got a little more discomforting, a little more uncomfortable without your phone. You'll be fine. You're not going to die. Your life's not going to fall apart. You're not going to starve. You're just not going to have, and I get it. People think that they need their cell phone to live. They think they need the internet to live. I come from a generation where there was no internet. There was no cell phone. That didn't come around until I was almost 22 years old. I was like, I was like in my early 20s, 20, probably 19, 20 years old, probably about your age. And all of a sudden, I got an email account. I had dial up AOL. You could live without it. I got to remind that to my wife and my children sometimes, particularly my wife, I have to remind her because she lets the children get away with the fact that, but I need my phone. And she's like, well, you know, the kids, they actually need their phone because they're going to be out somewhere. I'm like, no, 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 no. You and I, we, we met and we didn't have no cell phones. What do we do when we're out there? We borrow somebody's phone, right? Can I call my mom from your house? You got a quarter, use a pay phone, right? 
You'll be fine. You'll be fine without it. But think about how that would open up doors for you. Think about how that would create a vacuum in your life. Think about how that would create opportunities for you to rise to certain occasions. You say, and I can't get anything done. Well, when you don't have that phone and you're not having no fun, when you're not scrolling and you're not porning, you're not watching TV, you say you watch TV, social media and TV. That's my, that's my advice to you. Broad, broad speaking, my advice is you got to get uncomfortable. That means either move out of your parents' house or, uh, or, or go, go, go sleep in your car, um, get rid of all your comforts in your house, like even your bed and sleep on a yoga mat. Do something hard. Do something hard. But I think the hardest thing that you could do that's going to give you the best, uh, the, the best ROI is to get rid of your phone. Get rid of the technology. Get rid of your phone. Get rid of your TV. Get rid of it. Go to an internet cafe if you really need to connect, right? And have your laptop, right? And that'll be your only connection is through a laptop. But you got to go to where there's Wi-Fi. Make it so that you can't get Wi-Fi at your house. Right? You live, you'll be fine, but you're going to be a little bit more uncomfortable. And it is in that discomfort that you're going, it's going to open doors for you. I'm experiencing this right now, actually, with the, with the internet that is the non-existent internet in my house. You know what this is doing? The fact that I have basically non-existent internet in my house right now is forcing, and be, forcing me to be so much more creative and in ways that I didn't like being creative before. One of the things that I, that I, ha I must have some con subconscious resistance to it, but it's, it's, a, it's like delegating work to people. Right. I love when my work is delegated, but I don't like to delegate it. In other words, like I don't like s setting up the systems and, and, and getting people enrolled and teaching them what I need them to do and then monitoring them while they're doing it. And like I'm, it, I just get frustrated. I'm like, I do it myself. And it was way too many things I was doing for myself that now that I don't have the Internet, I have no choice. I have no choice but to not do it. I can't do it. I'm outsourcing all kinds of things that like I've been spending the past few years just doing myself. It's forcing me to get creative. It's forcing me to think outside the box. You get rid of your social media, you get rid of your internet, you get rid of your TV, it will force you to think outside the box. And then guess what? It's like mental gymnastics. Your brain's gonna get better. You're gonna be thinking more clearly. One of the things that comfort does to us is it makes, up, makes our brains slush, sluggish. It turns us into a sloth, a mental fucking sloth. Because you don't have to think about anything. Everything is at the tip of your fingers. Everything is so easy. I've personally gotten dumber since smartphones. I know I have. Why? Because my brain don't need to work so much. Comfort, comfort. Comfort is the true killer. Comfort is our killer. It won't be violence. It will be comfort. And it, it's going to happen across the board. Ice Age Farmer was talking about it with regard to the, to, the, um, to the food chain, you know, food distribution. And it's going to be one of these things, like, if you want the comfort and the ease and the convenience of going to a supermarket, right, which is a new thing, right, prior to the 1920s, 100 years ago, people didn't have supermarkets to go and buy oranges in Maine in December. It just didn't exist. What did they do? They don't have that convenience. They got to think, hmm, I better start planting stuff. I better learn how to raise things. I better learn how to slaughter animals. I better learn how to butcher animals. I better learn how to harvest crops. I better learn how to drive a tractor. I better learn how to dig a well. I bet you see all of a sudden you can't be bored no more. I can't go to the supermarket and get all those things. I'm just giving you an example of how comfort makes us stupid and lazy. You take away convenience one by one, you're going to grow in your abilities one by one. And as those conveniences disappear and you step up to fill those roles, that boredom is going to go away. If you have to pack up, get dressed, get in your car and go somewhere to use the internet, that's going to take an extra hour out of your day. And guess what? That's not a bad thing because you have way too many hours that you have nothing to do. Use a part of that day to travel. That's one of the things I've had to get used to here living on the farm is that if I got to go anywhere, it's going to take me a long time. 
And so it's going to eat up some time. That means I'm not going to be bored. My days go so much faster now. It's crazy how fast these weeks are going for me right now. Why? Because I lack a lot of comfort. I lack a lot of conveniences where I'm at right now. I've given up a lot of conveniences. And I don't have enough time to do everything that I need to do. That's why my room still looks like this. Look at this shit. How could I be bored? I don't have enough time to put my stuff away. But it all begins with getting rid of the comforts. Make yourself uncomfortable, bro. Fast. That's another one. Fast. When you find yourself starting to get like, it's an amazing thing. Fasting is an amazing medicine, both for the mind and for the body. You find yourself getting stuck in this dopamine rut, right? You know, porn, alcohol, alcohol, social media, and TV. Stop eating. Stop eating and watch how quickly your scattered brain starts to become centered and watch how ordered your days will become. Not because you're doing more or you're striving more or you're achieving more, but because you will sit still more. You will appreciate the moment more. You will be in contemplation more. That sedated state connects you to God more. You'll become a little bit more religious. You might find yourself praying a little bit more contemplating you might sit and discover right this is what fasting does it's a strange thing that happens when you fast you might sit and discover while you're fasting because when you have that low energy you just sit and when you just sit and your mind is not active because you don't have glycogen running your brain glucose all of a sudden you remember stuff I haven't scrubbed my bathroom tub in six months. There's a black line of dirt around my bathroom tub. Why haven't I cleaned that yet? And you can get up and you go start scrubbing the bathtub. It's the craziest thing. It's the strangest thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you take away dopamine, when you take away comfort, when you take away distractions and you sit, then you will actually get what really needs to be done, done. You talking about making music, right? And your projects, that's all a luxury. Making music, making your music and working on projects, that's all luxury. That doesn't need to be done. That legitimately does not need to be done. That's all just looking for shit, right? And, and the fact that it doesn't need to be done is why you're not doing it. But when you sit, you realize... There's things that legitimately need to be done. Like I haven't scrubbed the bathtub. There's dishes in the sink for the past three days. What the fuck am I doing? I'm bored. I'm trying to play music. But the dishes are overflowing in the sink. You'll come back to reality. That's what will happen. You'll come back to reality. Way too many times we're living in a, in a fake reality, in an augmented reality imaginary world you'll come back to the real world you start to see things that were there all along that you couldn't see because of the dopamine hits and the distractions so i'll leave you with this because i'm gonna i'm in a talkative mood today and i'm just talking in circles and i'll reiterate this and leave you with it get uncomfortable make yourself uncomfortable actively seek out something uncomfortable and not for the sake of advance Right? Not for the sake, like, you know, lifting. You do it because there's an advance. I get stronger. Not for anything, for the, but for the mere fact that you need to be uncomfortable. Just get uncomfortable because it's a natural pressure on the body. Do it because it's the right thing to do. And do it because it's going to change your life. Go smash that phone. I don't care if, you, I, don't care if I, I don't hear from you for a few weeks. If we don't hear from you for a few weeks, buddy... That's a good thing. That means you're advancing, you're growing, you're getting uncomfortable, right? And then come back and let us know how that works for you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students. 
where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.